Right, hello everyone. Today we're going to learn how to factorize using the multiplication frame. Okay, so uh, let's take a look at some of the success criteria. Uh, when we want to factorize by multiplication frame, uh, first of all, we need to identify the question type uh, that the multiplication frame can be used. Right. Then uh, second, we also need to know how to make use of the calculator to express our questions into a product of factors using the multiplication frame. Alright, so just like uh, our other factorization techniques like common factors, difference of squares, uh, factorization by groupings, okay, factorization by multiplication frame also has some criteria. Okay. So first of all, your question must, has o must have only three terms. Okay, if it has more than three terms, you cannot use uh, other methods. You cannot use multiplication frames. Okay, and uh, secondly, our one of our terms cannot be factorized. That means when you are looking at a question, right, one of the terms cannot be factorized. We'll be looking at that later, right? And uh, finally, uh, it must be arranged in descending powers because if it's not in arranged in descending powers, then uh, we cannot apply according to the multiplication frame technique. Uh, so, so these are some of the criteria that you must have before you start to use uh, factorization by multiplication frame. Okay, let's take a look at the example. Okay, so uh, we have this question over here. Okay, how many terms do we have? One, two, three. Okay, x squared is one term, five x is another term, six is another term. Right, and uh, we'll notice that six is not uh, able to be factorized by x. So one of the terms cannot be factorized and uh, is arranged in designing powers. So x squared, x, and number. Okay. Now to apply our multiplication frame. Okay, we'll first draw something like a fish. Right? Okay, so this is actually our multiplication frame. On the top left hand corner of the frame, we'll put a times here. Okay, in the first box over here, we'll put in the x squared. Right? And the last box over here, we'll put in positive 6. The sign is important. Right? Okay, so um, what we need to do now, right, what we can do now, uh, we can actually use our calculator. If you're using a Casio calculator, you can press mode 3, 3. Now this is for Casio calculator. Or some of us, we are using the newer Casio calculator. So if you're using that, then you press menu 5, 2, 2. Huh? So this is for the new Casio calculator. All right? And if you're using a sharp calculator, you press mode 3, 2. So this is for the calculator. Alright, now uh, when you key in these functions into your calculator, right, you'll see on your screen some alphabets there, A, B, and C. Now you'll see some values there. Okay. Now uh, how do we identify the values of A, B, and C? A is just the number in front of x squared or the coefficient of x squared. Right? So the coefficient when there's no number is actually a 1. Okay. B is the coefficient of x. So this will be the value of b. C is just the number itself. So c will be this. Right? So in this question, a will be equal to 1, b will be equal to 5, c will be equal to 6. Now key in all these into your calculator, press equal as you enter each value. Right? So I will key in a equals to 1, I press equal, b equals to 5, I press equal, and c equals to 6, I will press equal. Now after I press all these numbers, I will have two numbers. I'll have x equals to negative 2 or x equals to negative 3. Right? Okay, I'm interested in these two numbers only. Okay, don't care about the x. I'm just interested in these two numbers only. Right? Okay. What we'll do now is uh you will change the sign. Okay, so first thing you do, you change the sign. So we have negative 2 and negative 3 here. I will change it to positive 2 and positive 3. Okay. Now second thing is I will express it as a fraction. So 2 will become 2 over 1. 3 will become 3 over 1. All right. Okay. Now how do I interpret this now? For the denominator, it will be our x value. For the numerator, it will be our numbers. Right? 
So how do I read this? It will be x plus 2, x plus 3. I'll write it in the multiplication frame over here. So I'll write x plus 2 over here. I'll write x plus 3 over here. Right. Okay, finally we want to do a checking. Okay, we want to check whether the addition of these two boxes will give us the center value. Right. So how do we get the value inside this box? This is actually an area. Right. So x times x gives us x square. 2 times 3 gives us 6. Right. So same thing to obtain the area here. We'll just take 3 multiply by x. So 3 times x will get positive 3x. Okay, same thing over here. 2 times x will get positive 2x. Right? Okay, now we add these two numbers together. 3x plus 2x, does it give us 5x? Right? It does, right? So this will be the correct answer. That means our answer will be x plus 2, x plus 3. That's how we solve a question using the multiplication frame. Right? So let us write the answer down now. x squared plus 5x plus 6 will be equals to open bracket x plus 2 close bracket open bracket x plus 3 okay and this will be your answer okay are you clear about this okay let's take a look at the second example All right okay right now again we have a similar question we have 3x square plus uh, minus 5x plus 2 okay so uh notice that we have three terms here 3x square is one term negative 5x is one term plus 2 is one term right and uh one of the terms cannot be factorized, two cannot be factorized, okay, so uh, by x, yeah, so the second criteria is satisfied, and we notice that it's also a range in descending powers, x square, x, and number, all right, so we can use our multiplication frame, so let's do it now, we'll draw a fish head, okay, put a times here, I'll put in my 3x square here, I'll put in my plus 2 here, Okay, next thing I'll key in my numbers into the calculator. So A will be equals to 3, B will be equals to negative 5. Okay, take note of the sign here is negative 5, C is positive 2. Okay, so right now we'll key in the calculator. So 3, negative 5, press equal, and 2, you press equal. Right, we'll get X equals to 1 or x equals to 2 over 3 right okay so first thing we do we change the sign first so 1 will become negative 1 2 over 3 will become negative 2 over 3 okay next thing we express it as a fraction so negative 1 we change it to negative 1 over 1 negative 2 third is already a fraction so we don't need to do anything here okay next okay this is x these are your numbers Right. So how do I read this? It will be x minus 1, 3x minus 2. Okay, so you can write down here x minus 1, 3x minus 2. Okay. Lastly, we want to check whether it's the correct answer. So negative 2 times x, we get negative 2x. Negative 1 times 3x, we get negative 3x. You add them together, okay, it will give us negative 5x. Okay, negative 2x minus 3x, it will give us negative 5x. So this is the correct answer. Okay, so we'll write down the answer now. 3x squared minus 5x minus 2 will be equals to x minus 1, 3x minus 2. Okay, that's how we get the answer. Okay, clear on this? Okay, let's move on. Okay, so uh, let's look at a third question now. Okay, this time we have 8x minus 4 plus 5x squared. Okay, we have three terms here. Criteria 1 is satisfied. Okay, uh, negative 4 cannot be factorized by x, so criteria 2 is satisfied. Okay, but criteria 3, is this a range in descending powers? Okay, this is not a range in descending powers. So we need to rearrange the question first, right? So let's rearrange the question. So we'll have 5x squared plus 8x minus 4. Okay, so rearrange our terms first before you start using the multiplication frame. So this is a, an important step that you need to do. Okay. Once we have rearranged in descending powers, we will start using the multiplication frame. Okay, so draw the fish head. We put a times here. Phi x squared will be on top. Negative 4 will be at the bottom. Okay, again the same thing. Write down your a, b, and c. a will be 5. b will be 8. c will be negative 4. Okay, take note of the negative sign here. Alright, 
So key in your calculator again. So 5, 8, negative 4. Okay, we'll get 2 over 5 and negative 2. Right? Okay. So first thing, change your sign. So 2 over 5 will become negative 2 over 5. Positive 2 will become negative 2. Okay. Second step, change it into a fraction. So negative 2 over 5 is already a fraction. We don't need to do it. Okay, 2 will become 2 over 1. Okay. Denominator will be your x. Numerator will be your numbers. Right? So how do we read this? 5x minus 2. X plus 2. Okay, so we write down here 5x minus 2. X plus 2. Okay. Now finally we want to check whether the answer is correct. So 2 times 5x we get 10x. Right? Negative 2 times x we get negative 2x. Okay, so add them together. 10x minus 2x we will get positive 8x. Right? So it's indeed correct. So now our answer will just be this 2. Right? So it will be 5x minus 2 x plus 2. And this is how we get the answer. Alright, let's look at the last example. Now for this question, right, uh, we have three terms here. So criteria 1 is satisfied. Okay, but notice that 45 we can actually factorize by 3. Okay, in fact the whole question we can actually factorize by 3. Okay, so criteria 2 is not satisfied. Okay, because uh, all the terms can be factorized. So we will do that. Right, and then we look at criteria 3. Uh, are they arranged in descending powers? They are, right? Okay, so criteria 1 and 3 is satisfied. Criteria 2 is not satisfied. We need to factorize by a common factor 3. We'll do that now. Okay, so we take out common factor 3. We're left with 3p squared minus 14p plus 15. Okay, so uh, what we'll do now is we'll leave the 3 alone and we will just focus on the terms inside the brackets to do our factorization. Okay, so we draw our multiplication frame. We put the times here. We have 3p square and we have positive 15 here. Okay, so our a will be 3, our b will be negative 14, our c will be 15. Right? So key in your calculator, a equals to 3, b equals to negative 14, c equals to 15. Key in everything accordingly. Okay, you will get uh, answer as 3 and 5 over 3. Okay, we get 1 and 2 third. Okay, but express it as an improper fraction, we will get 5 over 3. And uh, because uh, they are both positive, right, we will now change the sign. That's our first step. So change it to negative 3, change it to negative 5 over 3. Okay, for our negative 3, we express it as a fraction. Okay, uh, 5 over 3 is already a fraction. So we will leave it as it is. So the denominator now will be our p. The numerator now will be our number, right? Okay, so we will read the answer as p minus 3, 3p minus 5, right? So p minus 3, 3p minus 5, okay? Check our answers now. So negative 5 times p, we get negative 5p, okay? Negative 3 times 3p, we get negative 9p, right? So uh, now we will add the two together. Negative 5p minus 9p, do we get negative 14p? Yes, right? So this will be indeed our answers. Okay, we'll write down our answers now. So this will be 3, bracket 3p minus 5, bracket p minus 3. Okay, and that's how we get all the answers. Are we clear about this? Okay, so that's all for today's lesson. Hope you have learned something. Okay, we'll see you next time.